For today, I begin our worship with an invocation and starting with lighting a few candles. In this moment, to begin our worship, I invoke the spirit of all who would be here. All those who would be so gathered and would be in the pews that are empty before me. All of the members and friends. I begin by invoking all who cannot be here, all of the visitors, all of the people who might be getting to know us, might be checking us out. I also invoke all those who can only be with us in spirit, all those who have died, who are with us and are around us in all times, in all places. With this invocation, I begin the worship with the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria, I'm the Reverend Jennifer Innes, and it is my pleasure to serve as the minister with this congregation. The service today recognizes some of the seasons of our life, one particular season. We mark the anniversary of when the pandemic went both global and local. For this worship, I welcome multiple voices, music from many sources, and glimpses of some of your stories too. In this worship, we mark the time. Part of our practice every Sunday includes naming those who have gone before us. The lands where our building currently resides was once the home of the Peoria people, and they too created their communities in their time. This pandemic has shifted so much, uh, but one aspect of life that still holds true is that what we offer makes an enormous difference in what we create. This congregation is made possible by the gifts of time and talent and money from members and friends. If you would like to make a donation, I want to invite you to see the link in the chat or in the slide at the end of the service. And while we are online, I welcome those of us, those of you who are new to discovering us. Visitors and friends uh, and guests are invited to our coffee hour at the end of worship. And you can see the Zoom link um, in the slide as well. And we would love to meet you and get to know one another a little bit better. For a last announcement, I extend one more invitation. On March 21st at 3 p.m., we will celebrate my installation as the minister with this congregation. This worship includes the formal promises we make as we begin our ministry. And also it includes messages and music and more from people across the country. Our Zoom has space for everyone. And if you are not on our contact list, I invite you to attend and you are welcome to send a note to us through the website. I am so glad that we can be together in this time. It is so good to gather for our worship. Good morning. 
Our opening words are from Reverend Eric Kamenitsky. Welcome to this moment. It's the only one we have. I am grateful you chose to spend it with us because this moment is different when you are here. When you're here, it's better. When you're here, this becomes a moment of community, a moment in community. You know, it's been a challenging year. What with the pandemic and all the politics and the weather. It's been a challenging year because we've had to figure out how to be together when we are apart. And we've had to stay apart in order to be together and stay well. But being apart itself actually makes it harder to be well. <sighs> Nevertheless, we have carried on long enough and well enough to be here now. So, welcome to this moment, the only time we have. Let us take hold of this moment and worship together. I'd like to share this little sign of spring from my dear UU friend, Betsy Johnston. She passed away 10 years ago, approximately, and I wanted to remember her today. This is a precious moment. Our chalice lighting is That Which Abides by Martha Kirby Capo. Through the week, this chalice abides, cupped and silent. Softly it gleams in a dimly lit room, complete unto itself. Today we come together as a community of faith, joyful and free. Our individual energies combine to spark the flame of truth. May we each draw strength for the other. And like the chalice, may we be bathed in the fire of commitment to social justice, equity, and peace. A year ago, on March 12th, the World Health Organization declared a global pandemic due to COVID-19. This was facing the reality that a novel coronavirus had appeared among us and as humans, we had no immunity to it. The virus we would later learn had appeared back as early as the fall, but in March, COVID had truly taken hold and disrupted our collective lives. Now, my family and I were in our apartment in St. Charles, Illinois. Uh, Patrick and I were serving as co-ministers with the congregation in Geneva, and we watched the press conferences uh, held by Governor Pritzker. We coordinated with staff when the order to stay at home went into effect, and we hopped on live Zoom for worship that Sunday, March 13th. This was turning on a dime in entirely undiscovered country in a moment of concern and wondering and oh my goodness gracious. The 200 plus, 250 plus congregation now fit onto my computer as I delivered worship um, standing in my bedroom. And on that Monday, the kids stayed home. I'm still so grateful for how the teachers managed in such impossible conditions. We had to ch learn church and life all over again. The experience of this past year is, let us not undersell it, a, a trauma, and I don't want to just lighten that word. Um, what we do in this moment and this time as people of a congregation of a community is create a narrative and tell a story because those acts are so important for healing and for taking care of our collective spirits. We have had and we are still in the midst of this deeply chaotic 
experience. We know that there is so much value in not going alone. And when we can share this moment together, it helps everyone move through it. Even though not everyone has made it through. The job of the church is to help you and I see the world as it actually is in all of its beauty and all of its complication and all of the ways in which this world is so hard to bear. This naming, this honoring, this being seen in your stories and in mine, this is holy work. Acknowledging someone's experience as real, this is the work of religious community. This is our liberal religious work to face the world as clearly as we can. We've done so many layers of encounter and work in this moment. There's some traumas that are going to be louder than others even. We are also facing the impact of the previous administration in the White House, uh, the impact of the election, the attempted coup to prevent the results of the election from coming to bear. We have amplified concerns about systemic racism, Ahmaud Aubrey, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, so many more people who are black, indigenous, and people of color, and their deaths and their struggles that have been with us for centuries as well. We have been weathering the storms of the past year of ice and fire, immediate disasters, and more awareness of climate change as it hastens on. My job as a minister is to do as much seeing of the world and being as vulnerable to, to the world and asking and answering that essential question, am I okay? And the answer is no. No. And it's also true that none of us are. And it is okay to admit that we are not okay. Earlier, I sent, I asked, put out a request for some of your stories, and you were so generous. generous. Um, one, for example, just begins very plainly. First of all, it still feels like a nightmare. Like someday I'm going to wake up and realize it was really just a bad dream, a very long, very bad dream. And naming, in fact, that story as well, being in the stages of grief, uh, from denial and anger and bargaining and depression and acceptance, a relative acceptance, perhaps endurance, perhaps willing to survive. Uh, as many of us have said to each other, I'm doing well for a pandemic. We begin by naming how we are going through these stages on a global scale and being as honest as we can about this time and resist rushing past it to share all of our messages, all of the struggles and all of the possibilities that we are beginning to see as well. And to do this is a beginning. It matters. It matters to each of us. It matters to all of our generations that are with us and those to come. So for this beginning, I invite you to be willing to name as much as you can and be present to the greatest degree that you can. We also get to hear a little bit about how this has impacted our children as well. Good morning. As we reach the one year anniversary of the COVID-19 pandemic, I'd like to share with you a coronavirus poem written by children from around the world about their thoughts on this pandemic and also their hopes for the future. My hope is that it will bring you understanding, connection, and in the end, peace. The playgrounds are asking about us. There are no classes, no schools, no churches, no guests, no visitors, no parks, no friends, no peace of mind. Empty and sad streets. 
Ramadan came and we could not go to the mosques. The outside world is silent. I'm afraid that my family and friends will get sick. I'm scared it will get to my grandparents' house and their door will be open. Before, I would say to everyone, I want to be alone, but today, I want to be next to you. I miss sharing the fun times, and that makes me sad. I miss being with my best friend, I miss her hugs. I grew tired of reading the same books. Oh, how I miss my freedom, the freedom to be a child, to just run and play. Time is becoming timeless. Seconds, minutes, months are flying. I want it to stop. We are afraid, yet we are fearless. We've looked in our hearts, and kindness we found. Thank you for your time, for your work, for your strength, and for your love. I am happy to have more time with my mum. I draw pictures, I play, and do homework. We've had social distancing picnics, social distancing walks, social distancing hugs, and social distancing talks. The planet is taking a break and shows us its charms. Animals come and go from the shadows. Our wildlife grows like us. I dream of a day where masks aren't needed. I'll go to the park to skate. I'll play football outside. I'll dance in the street with no shame. The fog and the darkness, they won't win. The sun is waiting, dreaming, smiling. All this will pass, we will be fine. We will see you soon. Join me, give me your hand and let's face this because together we are stronger. As the children of our world so gracefully shared in their poem, we will see each other soon, and we will take each other's hands in the spirit of community because we are stronger together. So may it be. One of the most powerful ways that we can uplift and hold each other in our naming and in all of the stories that we share, uh, including the spirit of our children, is through music. My colleague, the Reverend Dan Schatz, is a minister and a musician, and he created this new music in response to the pandemic. I invite you to join me in listening to Carry the Flame. toughest time you ever knew the only thing that you could do was carry the flame sickness spreading through the land you held your spirit in your hands and carried the flame When storms and sorrows gathered round You raised your head and you stayed your crown You carried the flame Through endless days of the hardest living You kept on loving, kept on giving You kept on and carried the flame the flame, raise it high, send its beacon through the sky, keep it strong and shining through the pain, let it rise and let it grow, let it light the world you know, let it glow, carry the flame. And when the day is done at last 
We take on the spark you passed And carry the flame From hand to hand we send it on The kindling hope of a rising dawn In a song we carry the flame Carry the flame, raise it high Send its beacon through the sky Keep it strong and shining through the pain let it rise and let it grow Let it light the world you know Let it glow Carry the flame We are nurses, doctors, teachers We are children, parents, preachers And we all Carry the flame we are scientists and cargo packers, farmers, singers, grocery stackers, young and old. We carry the flame, carry the flame, raise it high, send its beacon through the sky, keep it strong and shining through the pain. Let it rise and let it grow Let it light the world you know Let it glow Carry the flame Let it glow Carry the flame For this section, I'd like to speak to some of the losses and sorrows that we've endured. You know, a year ago, the world kind of, for many of us, collapsed into and compacted into squares and screens without real touch, without the range of contact that fed us uh, in all of the undercurrents of our lives. Just for some of us that ritual of going and getting a little coffee on the way to work or on the way to school, seeing another human being. Those little moments add up as much as uh, all of the great and deep relationships that we have around us as well. We have now had such direct experience of isolation, separation, knowing that this act of keeping our distance from one another was an act of love, of compassion, as well as for self-preservation. But this is not how we are wired. Our being away from each other has impacted every aspect of our lives. I see you the families with children at home and adults who've had no time for themselves. Um, everyone, for example, everyone of all ages has lost so much so suddenly and for such an extended period of time. Remember how last year it was like, well, let's do this for a few months to flatten the curve and then longer and longer. People have lost jobs, have lost relationships, have lost family, or some of that loss has also been with being too much around each other for those of us who are in confined spaces um, that aren't necessarily ideal for our spirits either. So many of us just plain feel awful. One member uh, wrote in to me saying, I've gained 10 pounds from sitting in my chair every day, and I feel like I've lost half my memory. I've learned that I am not a self-starter, and I've also learned that I'm an even worse housekeeper 
than I realized. I can add my own amen to a lot of that as well. We are people so much missing the people. There's so many things that we have not been around each other for, to celebrate, to honor, to remember, to mourn. And we won't even know the full measure until we can see each other a little bit more. It is hard to gauge absence when you aren't around the person again. There's so much loss of what has been. Rage at leaders for their inaction and rage at our neighbors for dismissing our well-being. There is a loss of faith in the midst of so much that was unknown at the beginning and still had to be figured out a little bit at a time in increments in the midst of so much death. Because there are, of course, the deaths. As of this recording, in this country alone, there's been over 530,000 people who have died directly from coronavirus. And people had to die alone as well, away from the people who would love them. This too needs to be named. Every person who has died needs to be named and known. The Unitarian Church in Baton Rouge has a growing installation that represents these deaths. They bought 3,000 jars several months ago with a plan to fill them each with 1,000 stones because they thought 3,000 jars, 300,000 would be more than enough. And now they're adding 1,000 more stones to each jar to keep the count true. There's also been deaths to people because of people not wanting to go for medical care or the lack of access of care. Additional deaths probably two or three times as many as have died from coronavirus, which leaves something like 2.5 million people who have died because of this pandemic. And our death and further our grief away from, has been had to be navigated away from the natural coming together that we would do, that we've been further constricted, that our grief further delayed. We have found ways. It's still difficult, but we have found ways to gather and remember, some with online memorials and some with being at a distance, but yet still physically present. The Reverend Heather Daniels gathered several remembrances from congregations across the country. And in this next video, she brings them together uh, along with a litany of witness. For those who die from this illness, whose deaths teach us the depth of love and the profound fragility of life, we bear witness. The memorials and weddings and graduations we cannot hold this truth moving us to deeper patience and greater innovation we bear witness for the isolation we feel loneliness measured in distances much greater than six feet for new appreciation for the intimacy of simple companionship we bear witness the technology, an ever-present reminder of our separateness, yet uniting us in new ways across countless miles, we bear witness. For the unholy intermingling of politics and public health, and the acts of everyday people caring for the forgotten, feeding the jobless, crafting masks when there were none to find, we bear witness. resilience born of long-term crisis, 
and creativity born of adaptation, for grief and remembrance, for all of us, the remote learner, the tired parent, the long hauler, the vulnerable elder, the essential worker, the makers of vaccines, the survivors, and the ones who live in memory, for all of us, for all of us one year later, for all of us looking towards what comes next, for this moment, we bear witness. Music, 
invite us to take this moment in our service uh, for prayer, for reflection, for meditation. And we begin, we begin by honoring some of the joys and sorrows that are among us, that are in this particular congregation this week. And the first I'll offer is a personal joy that on March 19th, I celebrate 21 years of being in ordained ministry. So 21 years ago this week, the congregation where I grew up, the Unitarian Universalist Church of Worcester, Massachusetts, ordained me into the ministry along with all who gathered. And it was such a precious gift. Also in our congregation, I want to uh, remember Bonnie Goodat that she died on March 23rd in 2018. And I wanna thank Adam Goodat for adding his beloved wife's beautiful flowers to our pulpit decoration today. Thank you, Adam. And let us hold Bonnie and Adam in our hearts. I wanna pause for all the names and the milestones that are among us, that are our personal joys and sorrows that are with us, that we would hold, and that we would offer uh, to our circle of care. Let us take a moment. Amen. For our larger prayer, I offer one in the spirit of this service. We gather in the spirit of love, in the presence of all that is, in the spirit of life. We have spent one full year apart. We pause this moment to name and lift up the jumble of feelings we hold. We grieve for those we have lost, whether COVID took them or whether the pandemic took away our chances to be together, to mourn their loss. We say their names now those beloved family, friends that we have lost since last March. I invite you, as we are gathered, to say those names out loud, wherever you may be, and pause. And pause and bring those names to our minds and hearts. We hold their memories together. We hold in our prayers as well, all who are recovering from COVID, those long haulers who are dealing with the lasting effects of this illness. We hold in love all those who have lost work during the pandemic, those whose schooling has been interrupted, those who struggle to parent while working from home, those frontline workers who are at risk every day, and those who feel the ache of isolation and loneliness. We think of all the occasions, holidays, celebrations that have been missed. We think of the last time we sang together in the sanctuary, not knowing how long it would be until we can safely do so again. Because life is so complicated and so rich in layers and experience, we also give thanks 
for the gifts we have found amid the loss and the distance. This community has been so creative, so courageous, so caring, and finding ways to stay connected, being willing to try new ways of gathering, steadfastly reaching out to one another, we give thanks for the ways we've been able to grow the boundaries of our community beyond geography, welcoming in those dear ones from far away. And we give thanks for the human miracle of three vaccines making their way to us in less than a year, each one a cause for celebration and relief. May we draw on the spirit of love, the presence of all, the holy that is around us and within us, to help us hold on through whatever may yet come. May we be resolute of heart as we mask up, as we continue to care for each other by keeping a distance, knowing it is an act of love. May we be open and curious about the possibilities that unfold before us, seeing the ways we can not just get back to normal, but forward to be better. In the spirit of prayer and meditation and love, here we gather, here we offer ourselves to the universe and to each other and all that is our life gather in this time and this space. May our prayers be heard. Amen. This final section, this final reflection, I'm calling it emergence. A year ago, there was so much we did not know. Do you remember that? For months, beginning when the public first learned of this virus and the descriptions and plans and recommendations, how everything shifted constantly, and how our lives depended on learning and adapting as quickly as possible. So much has been so complicated and not knowing where to, where to go, what sources to trust, how to talk to each other how to communicate with each other, even though we were all going through so much of this together. The grief, the struggle is so present and around us and among us. And what's also true, what's also true is how real gifts have appeared as well gifts of generosity of spirit, of help, of listening, of new stories and music and words and wisdom. We have been discovering how to adapt and respond uh, to what has been already in process in trends in social and religious institutions. We have been rediscovering what is truly important and valuable. How much we are still needing and wanting to be together and gathering in all the ways that we can, including in our religious communities. We have this window to see the world again for the first time. Those are some of my thoughts. I wonder what you're thinking. And some of you shared that with me, that, that stopping in the way that so many of us had to stop with our lives as normal, that stopping was a gift, that the pause was indeed good, and that things are, might be cleaner, might be more organized. Eh, they might not. But there was an opportunity for some of us, and we were able to, to clear what needed to be cleared. Some of us have had new jobs, new relationships. Some of us have blossomed, and not just our, ourselves as adults, but our children and our youth as well. Some really have found 
a groove that they might not have otherwise found. One of you talked to me about how truly this has been such a positive experience, saying, I really did start new ventures. I have three jobs. I practice my art. It turns out I'm having fun and meeting new friends. This has really opened up some great things. So my experience has been great. So much is true all at once. We are beginning, we are still beginning a new ministry, you and I. We were willing, not quite a year ago, but close, to take a leap of faith with each other without the direct experience of meeting in the usual way. And as we look forward into the next year, we are taking another leap and another adaptation of creating community and practical application of all that we have found to be true and wonder where do we get to go from here. I would say, let us go no faster than we absolutely have to. Let us give ourselves the grace of relearning how to be around people. Remember that the normal that was disrupted wasn't okay for so many of us. Give ourselves the grace to say, how do we actually want to be? We are capable of such beauty, such strength, such compassion, and we will need every bit of our capacity as we face the months and the years to come because the struggle remains a struggle for all of us and for each of us. That has not gone away either. I called this last section emergence. The title really should have had a corollary, you know, emergence along with all of um, the unfinished work, the undiscovered country. We are not finished but forming in this as we emerge begin to emerge from the worst of the pandemic. We have lessons learned, a, chap, a chance to adapt. Remembering there's still so much we don't know, so much we need to continue. May we treat each other with the care we realize makes all the difference in what we create together. May we be authentic and honest with each other as we move into this year to come. Let us enter into this moment with all the faith, with all the authenticity, with all the love that I know is around us and among us, that we may go into the world, live out our mission, be bold and courageous, and go forth. Amen.
We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. How do we measure a year? One of the major songs from the musical Rent notes that there are 525,600 minutes in a year. This last week, we marked 525,600 minutes since the word COVID-19 truly entered our lives and was declared a pandemic in the world. Since we last saw so many of our children and our grandchildren and our families, since we went to the office, since we had a hug. And during that time, we've had well over 525,600 deaths, more, much more than one a minute. And yet we survive. We are gathered as a community again today. We end our worship with this remembrance, with this reminder of keeping hope for better times to come, of more love, of more beauty, of more joy in the next 525,600 minutes that will mark the year we start now. May we measure this year in the love given and the love received. May it be abundant around us and among us and offered by us. Our worship is ended. Let our service begin. <laughs> 